Joining us uh, live now from our city centre studios for us to understand uh, this legal process and what really we should expect in the coming days. Thank you very much, Kibe Mungai, for joining us here on Kivumbi 2017. In essence, what did NASA do today at the Supreme Court? I think uh, basically it was uh, to put in their responses in accordance with the rules that uh, are in place. Mm -hmm to the responses that were given by President Uhuru Kenyatta and the IEBC and the returning officer, Mr. Chebukati. And uh, that, uh, in law, we say that uh, it is to ensure that now we have had what is the case of uh, NASA. We have had the response by the Jubilee and the elected and the president-elect. And of course now, on the basis of the evidence that came in, NASA has also responded to it. And I heard their senior counsel, James Orengo, expressing that uh, the confidence that uh, what they have got from IEBC proves their case that there was uh, a, a huge conspiracy to defeat the electoral process and fraud. So we look forward to seeing how it works out. Well, we understand that uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m. we will be having the pretrial conference. Uh, at this point, pretty much it looks like the initial stages of this particular case are over. Just take us through what really we should expect from tomorrow going forward. I think from uh, tomorrow going forward, there are a couple of things that are expected. First of all, uh, during the pretrial conference, the court will give directions regarding the issues of hearing. It will set the timelines, but the normal expected issue would be that uh, if there is any application that uh, would be filed by any of the parties regarding an issue to do with scrutiny, regarding audit, regarding the issue of uh, the documentations that have come, the parties joining, that is an issue that uh, will be dealt with tomorrow. Then after you have resolved the issue that you now know who are the parties, amicus curiae, and uh, people supporting this side or the other side, then you will go now into the issue of the actual hearing of the case. For purposes of the actual hearing of the case, you expect that uh, the NASA will go first, that is uh, uh, on Bodinga and Rabo Kalonzo Musioka. Then the first response would be by IEBC, then Ofula Chebukati, then President Uhuru Kenyatta. And of course now, any other person supporting NASA case, they will be heard together with the NASA. So that after NASA has made its presentations, those supporting their case should be heard first. Then the same case will go to the respondents. And of course it is tomorrow, because uh, we must get a judgment by Friday this week. Yes, yes. It is tomorrow that we are expecting that they, we are going to have... Uh... Keep going, Kibe, I can hear you. Okay, it is uh, tomorrow that we expect that uh, the, the Supreme Court, bearing in mind that a judgment must be given on Monday, that it will allocate the time, mm -hmm. because uh, there is a serious shortage of time that now you will, shall know if the hearing is going to start either tomorrow or most probably on mm. Sunday, then uh, the petitioners will be allocated their time, mm. the parties supporting the petitioners, the respondents, and any other response that would come. And then they shall know how many days the judges themselves expect to reflect upon the submissions that would have been made by the parties and the presentations of the case so that now we can be able to know when the, ju the judgment, of course, must be read by midnight of Friday next week. So the key issue is to know when does the hearing start and when does the hearing end. The actual date for hearing in my reckoning, although confirmation is tomorrow, is likely to be on Sunday. 
Well, NASA today, while uh, filing their counter responses or their uh, written submissions, they also uh, made intellectual applications uh, to scrutinize the 54,000 um, copies uh, presented to the Supreme Court by the IEBC. And at the same time, they're also seeking permission uh, to look at the IEBC servers. At what point do we expect the court to make a decision on this application? I think I expect that to be made tomorrow mm -hmm. because it is from tomorrow now that you would be able to know so that in terms of allocation of time, some of these issues of scrutiny may have to be done before the actual presentation of the case can start. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that would be some of the initial things that would have to be done. And therefore, that would be hard tomorrow. That is the kind of applications that you are saying are preliminary in nature and they would have to be resolved tomorrow. At, se at 7 p.m., as you have said. Mm -hmm. Lastly, um, we understand uh, that NASA members of parliament have said that uh, they will not be attending the swearing-in uh, ceremony and uh, the first sitting that where they expected to uh, elect uh, speakers and deputy speakers. Of course, they have not confirmed this, but will this in any way uh, throw parliament into um, some legal confusion, if I could use that word? I think uh, the law is very clear. The members of parliament from NASA are expected to be state officers. Mm -hmm. Since and the law is clear that you must be sworn in before you can officially take a, assume your office. So on the date of swearing in, if you do not take an oath of office, it would effectively mean that another election would have to be held in your constituency, as uh, there, would, it, there would be a vacancy. And uh, in my view, this will not stop parliament from going on. Parliament will go on because all that would have happened is that uh, certain members did not turn up to be sworn in as members. But the law would take effect. And the taking effect would mean those seats would have to be declared as vacant so that they can set uh, the stage for the swearing for another by-elections to be held. And uh, I wonder whether realistically, I expect members of parliament not to be sworn in, but uh, I still expect to see whether, in fact, they will confirm that they don't want to be sworn, because it would be giving up your position on the chip. Mm. Kibe, always a pleasure speaking to you. Kibe Munga is a constitutional lawyer. They're joining us live uh, from, the, from our city centre studios and uh, we were also bringing you live pictures from the Supreme Court uh, where setups are currently being made for the pre-trial conference that is expected to be held tomorrow at 7pm. Now, the Kenya National Union of Teachers says the Teachers Service Commission should engage with teachers on the implementation of their collective bargaining agreement. NAT Secretary General Wilson Sosion says TSC has violated some of the negotiated agreements with the teachers. He spoke in Kisumu during a forum with teachers living with disability. All right, and we'll definitely be bringing you that story shortly on the Kenya National Union of Teachers. Let's take a short break here on Kivumbi 27th and we'll be back with more.